Hey, Skylar here from Change You Can Wear. Today we're making some rings out of a dead fish. So here's what we're gonna be using. These are cuttle bones from a cuttlefish. And technically they're not a fish. So people have been using these for centuries for carving and casting jewelry with. So it's kind of a neat, it's a neat method. And the reason we still use it today is because you get a really neat design from the textures in the cuttlefish. And another really cool thing about this and why I'm really excited to show you guys is it's super cheap. These are only a couple bucks. You get them at a pet supply store. I think they're for birds. Birds eat, eat them, I guess. And you know, you, you only need a cuddle bone, maybe a file, not even that actually, hardly. You could use a couple of kitchen utensils if you really wanted to. And a torch and some metal, and you can make yourself jewelry with this. So, really awesome. And what I want to do is I'm going to be carving into this for this first project and making a ring shank that we're gonna be able to fold around and solder. And I wanna capture this texture in here, but I want my texture to be a little bit longer. So I'm gonna, instead of smoothing this thing out flat, I'm gonna smooth it out at a slight angle. And that's gonna give me elongated texture patterns from this guy. Before we figure out how to use this guy to make a ring, I wanna to talk to you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like us. You can explore new skills and take your existing skills to the next level. Skillshare has all sorts of classes on all kinds of different things. The ones that really interest me are jewelry, jewelry design, photography, and even building your Instagram business. I've been learning along with Tyler McCall in his class, Instagram for Business, Build an Engage Community. In his class, he lays out easy to follow ideas that helps me follow along and learn how to build my Instagram business. Skillshare is made specifically for learning, so that means there's no ads. And they're always launching new premium classes. So that way you can stay focused and continue to learn and grow. And it's less than 10 bucks a month. Right now, the first thousand people to click the link in the description box below We'll get a free trial of premium membership so you guys can explore Skillshare for yourself. All right, let's get back to making this ring. Check out that texture. That's what we're looking for. So cool. Oh my gosh, though, it stinks so bad. Ugh. The things I do for YouTube. Okay. All right, if I didn't mention it before, and no, I just didn't, make sure you're wearing a dust mask. This stuff is funky. You do not want it in your lungs. So check this out though, look at that. Look at that texture. It's so very cool. That's gonna make an amazing ring. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to carve a ring shank in there. And we're gonna be using this guy. This is, this is our baby. This is uh, the wax file that we we talk a lot about and if you guys want to know where to get the baby and the birth and all that our wax carving tools check out the information in the description box below for that but for today we're going to be using it for carving cuddle bow so we'll be carving a channel in here a couple millimeters deep that'll do All right, so now what we need to do is cut our funky little smelling creature right through here. So we'll get it ready to cast. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this somewhere else. Hold on. All right, now it's time to cut our funky smelling little friend through right here and get it ready to cast. There we go. Actually, let's cut the top off of it just a tiny bit too. Then we'll cut a little area at the top for our sprue so that way we have somewhere for the metal to get into it. It's a very narrow little sprue, isn't it? Let's see how that works. All right, so we'll leave this one for a minute and we will do another one, a different method here. And so for this method, we're just gonna flatten one of these out nice and flat. You get a big enough cuttlefish bone, you can just cut it in half and use one cuttlefish for this particular method. That'll probably be good enough. Now let's cut these ends off real quick. Got 
Okay, so what we're trying to do is get these nice and flat together. So that way there's no gaps in there. This is gonna be the top, so we'll have a sprue hole there. So that'll be fine, but nice and flat together. Now that's gonna be pretty good. And so now what we can do, is I have a ring already. And I carved this ring in wax and then cast it the normal traditional way in silver. Um, but what you could do is use a ring you already have like I'm going to do, or you can carve a ring fresh from wax and then we can make a mold of this with the cuddle bone. We'll position it about where we want it, where we think it's gonna be the best. And then we're going to turn it around on a flat surface for this particular method and press it into the cuddle bone. And then press down. Oh yeah, there we go. That went in really right, really nice. So you can see it's pressed all the way into the cuddle bone, which is exactly what I want to do. Wherever the mold joint comes together, we're going to have a line right there. You know, I just don't want to have that in the middle of my ring to fix it. So we can put it on the end and then totally get rid of it. Okay, so once we have it like that, nice and pressed in, you can take your other cuddle bone and yeah, that'll fit really nice. So what we'll do now, take this guy out and then cut our sprue in. So we'll just gently check that out. That's so cool. And if you can, like have a really fine, you know, paintbrush or something, you can get in there and kind of blow the dust out, blow it, blow it out by hand, you know, or just blow into it. Um, but if you can get a little brush in there, you can expose more of this, this texture. I do not have a little brush, so we're just going to go with this. Now we're going to go ahead and just cut our sprue into this guy, somewhere where our silver can flow in. And sorry for all the extra noise, guys. I have to have the windows and doors open when I'm doing this. This stuff straight up stinks. It's worth it, but it stinks. Awkward. So now what we need to do is wire these together and then we'll have our void in there. And then what I'm gonna do with this guy is wire it next to something flat, like a flat metal piece, because I don't want any texture on the back side of this guy. We're just gonna smooth it off. Whereas this one, we're getting the texture on the face of this ring with this side. So that's why I'm using one of these flat guys here. And another method I'm not gonna show, which is these two methods I'm showing, but another method you could do if you don't have something that you wanna carve and impress, or just carve something like that. Similar to this, you can carve all kinds of designs in here. You know, just draw something out and then just carve the negative of what you want to see. And then you could always cast a custom pendant or all kinds of cool stuff. All right, let's get these wired up, ready to, ready to cast. <laughs> Maybe I'm making a bigger deal of this than it actually is. I don't know if it smells that bad. It's really grossing me out though, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, you know what it reminds me of? I just got to thinking of, you know, have you ever smelled like a ferret or like a ferret's bedding? When I was a kid, one of my friends had a ferret. That thing freaked me out so much. It reminds me of what it smelled like. And if you have a ferret, you know, I'm sure it doesn't smell at all, you know. Maybe it's just a childhood memory. <laughs> okay, we gotta get this nice and tight. We don't want any seam, you know, or we want a very minimal seam anyway. Pretty sweet. We got one ring ready to go. We got one ring ready to go. For this other guy, I got this metal block I think I'm gonna use. Ooh, that might not be the best idea, huh? I wish that had a wider area to pour into. Here's what we're gonna do. I think we can make that work. Well, that should do it. All right, let's go cast these with some silver. There's one down. And let me tell you something, if you thought it smelled bad when you were carving it, you should smell it burning. It's like a whole pile of 10 ferrets that jumped into a fireplace. Okay, so let's cut this thing open and see what we got inside. I have to tell you, I stepped out for a minute and then when I came back in, it was worse than I remembered. They've been making a bigger deal out of it than I should. Oh no, it didn't fill on this one. Oh, that means I'm gonna have to do it again. Yeah, you know what I really need to do is I'm just gonna do it with two cuttlefish the proper way. I was trying to save myself some grinding. There just wasn't enough of a sprue there to pour in. So we'll do it the right way. I will show you the results. Okay, let's cut this guy open. 
Let's just say that Cuttlefish will probably not be making an appearance on my website other than maybe the rings I'm making today. Ooh, this one looks good. This one has a really nice design on it. Here. Initial thoughts is it looks really good. We're gonna have to clean it up obviously, but really encouraging. Go wash it off real quick. All right, here we go. Check that out. That looks really good. I mean, there's some cleanup that we gotta do around this edge and obviously the sprue, but that looks really great. So yeah, we'll cut this, this off of here and then we'll clean this up. And then the lines that we're gonna sand away on here, we'll take a file or a graver and file or engrave them back in. So that's no big deal. You take a couple, that little tiny file set from Harbor Freight and then you can cut those lines right back in there after cleaning it up. All right, we'll get that guy cleaned up real quick and we'll go from there. Okay, so I had only a couple little pieces of cuttlefish left, like little, little short ones like this. And I carved my thing in so close to the bottom that when I poured my hot metal in, most of it leaked at the bottom. So super big bummer. And those are my last pieces of cuttlefish. And to be honest with you, I'm not gonna go buy any more. My whole shop stinks. Everything's covered in cuttlefish dust. Woo! Anyway, so, but this is what did come out of there. So this was the last little bit that didn't quite leak out. And look at the texture though. Like this is really dang cool. This makes me wanna go buy more cuttlefish, honestly. Like that is a really amazing texture. This is the back that, you know, I didn't try to clean up at all. But this front, I brushed the dust out of the ridges and it came up with this, which is just amazing. So, too small for a ring. My plan is to clean up all the cuttlefish carnage everywhere in my whole shop. It's over my casting stuff. It's on the ground, it's on my seat, it's in my pan. <laughs> It's even out back, the ground back there because I got so tired of working in here, being so gross and smelly. But anyway, I'm going to clean all that up and tomorrow when my shop airs out, I'm going to come back and then we're going to finish these guys up. I'm going to make this, I think, into a pendant. I'm going to think about it overnight, but I think a pendant would be really neat actually. Maybe I'll set a nice sapphire in there or something. We will see. But yeah, awesome process. If you don't have any uh, all factory senses, this might be the casting method for you. Catch you guys tomorrow. It's showing a scrap cuttlefish bone there in Winston. <laughs> you are staying outside tonight. So back the next day, time to clean this thing up. We was gonna cut the sprue off and then fix the lines. So I got to thinking about it last night and I'm gonna be doing something totally different with this guy. And it's gonna be good enough to where I think we should do it in another video. So a little bit of doodling on there. Me and Paul Bartnick were talking about it yesterday. So I think we have a cool idea for it. So keep an eye out for a second video where we're making a really neat pendant with this guy with a new method that I haven't shown yet. So we'll be leaving that one for later. We'll get this guy finished up real quick. looking pretty neat actually so I think it's time to antique it and what we're gonna be using for that we'll clean it with some Dawn dish soap and then get some water that's just about boiling put some liver of sulfur in there then we'll antique it and then wipe it down with some 4 out steel wool and I think we'll be about done so this is the rough one I didn't really clean up the inside at all I just left all the texture everywhere and I did this one actually off camera same exact method except for I polished the inside totally smooth I don't know which one do you guys like best I definitely like the clean silver inside look, but there's something about that rough one. Let me know what you guys think. And like I said earlier in the video, I don't think I'm going to be doing much cuttlefish casting in the future, but these two I think I'm gonna throw up on the website. So if you guys are interested, I'll have them up there. Once I have them up there, I'll put a link in the description box of this video below. And if these are your size and you want one, they'll be there. All right guys, thank you for watching another video. 
I really enjoyed the casting process, even though I did not like the smell at all. Maybe I was being too sensitive to it, who knows. You guys try cuttlefish casting for yourself? Let me know how you guys like it. It's one of those casting methods that doesn't take hardly anything as far as supplies, so most everybody can get into this. Make sure you hit me up on my Instagram, Change You Can Wear, with pictures of your guys' cuttlefish casting projects. Alright guys, thank you for watching at the end of the video. Make sure you check out my website, changeyoucanwear.net, for these cuttlefish rings and my other jewelry that I have for sale. And I will catch you guys on the next one.